Reggae Just Extra with Ross Dennis. First degree murder at John 16 and over. Gone are the days of the original, roots heaviness we all remember from the 1980s. No thanks to strife within the group. When Michael Rose departed the Black Uhuru band just as they were peaking, Simpson and the rest struggled through the Positive album, a record that many say was poorly released upon the heels of multiple Grammy-nominated albums. Then, Puma died. Rose in an interview said Simpson accused him of maltreating her when there was nothing like that, not even when his own wife is related to Puma's husband. You are welcome back to another crucial video by Reggae Gist Extra with Ras Dennis. Watching Reggae Just Extras Black Uhuru's Edition. In today's video, we will dive deep into the world of the Black Uhuru and uncover some fascinating facts about the group members and their contributions to music. Kindly stay tuned and do remember to subscribe to this channel, like, share, and most importantly, hit the notification bell to be the first to watch our next video. From 1972 till the present, the group has undergone several lineup changes over the years, with Derek Ducky Simpson as the mainstay. They had their most successful period in the 1980s, with their album Anthem winning the first ever Grammy Award for Best Reggae Album in 1985. Black Uhuru was formed in the Waterhouse District of Kingston, Jamaica with the members Don Carlos, Garth Dennis, and Derek Ducky Simpson. The first song they released was the cover for Curtis Mayfield's Romancing to the Folk Song followed by Time is on Our Side, but unfortunately, none of them was a success. The band then spilt up. Dennis and Carlos left Simpson behind, who got Errol Nelson and Michael Rose to join him. The group now taking the name Black Sounds Uhuru. Their Prince Jammy produced debut album, Love Crisis, was released in 1977. Nelson returned to the Jays in late 1977 and was replaced the following year by Sandra Puma Jones, a social worker from South Carolina, USA. Along the line, Michael Rose parted ways with Black Uhuru due to a falling out with Simpson. Junior Reed came on board and then Andrew B. In February 2018, Simpson's team claims they saw Micah Rose advertising himself as the voice of Black Uhuru for a show in the United States and they sue him. This didn't go down well with Michael Rose. In an interview with Reggae Vibes, he said, He had some guys give me a summons, saying I'm using Black Uhuru's name. And I wasn't using no Black Uhuru name. That guy, Simpson, is just trouble. He has a way to say I treated Puma bad when there was nothing like that. According to Ducky Simpson, Michael Rose joined Black Uhuru and Black Uhuru had already existed before he joined. After 34 years since Michael Rose left the group, now he has just realized that he is the voice of Black Uhuru. When Stephen Cooper of Reggae Vibes told Ducky Simpson that he wanted to know his reaction because he specifically asked Don Carlos if, despite any negative history that exists, whether he and Ducky Simpson could ever get back together and be like the original Black Uhuru and Don Carlos said, he carries no grievance and that they can't get together again. On the other hand, Ducky said he would definitely not do because the last attempt almost cost him his name. That reuniting with Don and Garthy was a big, big, big mistake in which they ended up in court fighting for the name. According to him, both him and Garthy were together, formed Black Uhuru, and then recruited Don Carlos. Both Don and Garthy left Black Uhuru and went solo after they did two or three songs together. Garth went with Wailing Souls. And after 18 years, he invited Don and Garthy back into the group to work and they tried to overthrow him for the name. They said they owned this is the, the name. This the place to be for your reggae gist, 
facts, and culture. When Ducky Simpson was confronted with a comment from Garthy, because Garthy had earlier told Cooper that Roy Palmer was the person who gave him the name Black Uhuru and Ducky used to stay with him at his house when the group was formed at 14, Balcom Drive in Jamaica. Ducky responded that Garthy was a guy working 9 to 5. He didn't put any group together. Although, Garthy came from a musical background, his sister is Beverly Kelso who sang with Bob Marley. Joe Higgs was Garthy's in-law, and they all used to rehearse in Garthy's yard, including the Wailing Souls. When he met Garthy in Waterhouse, Garthy was a customs broker. He was a 9-to-5 bald head. He'd never sang a song in his life until he met him. He, Ducky, was the one who enlightened him into singing. He further questioned that if the name was given to Garth Dennis, why was he out in the cold? Garth and his good self were sitting on a wall one day when Roy Palmer was passing and simply said, Hey, you guys have a name? And they said, No, not really. And he said, I have a name for you guys. Then he says, Uhuru. That was mentioned in the Los Angeles Supreme Court and the guy even came to court and gave evidence for Garth in which the judge said if the name was Garth's own, why did he abandon it? Garth Dennis had blamed the lost the group name to Simpson because his lawyers in the U.S. never come up with a case about the name of the group he previously won in Jamaica. In Ducky Simpson response, he said there was a court injunction in Jamaica against Don Carlos and Garth Dennis when they wanted to do a big concert under the name Black Uhuru. However, the following year, they did the same thing. But his lawyer decided to use previous document to file another injunction in which the judge refused to honor it. So, Garth and Dom won the injunction that year due to that, and it wasn't a trial like the one that later took place in Los Angeles. It was an injunction stopping them from doing a concert. You are now watching Reggae Just Extra's Black Uhuru's edition. Ducky Simpson said he never had internal problems with Michael Rose because he's the general with five star while Michael is a foot soldier. It should be noted that Michael's story didn't start with Black Uhuru. In 1976, Michael Rose was already a seasoned performer, having honed his skills by performing on Jamaica's hotel circuit. He already had several solo singles to his credit. These include the original Guess Who's Coming to Dinner and Clap the Barber, both recorded for producer 90 The Observer and Running Around for Winston Campbell. As earlier mentioned, Black Uhuru's first full length was released in 1977 and called Love Crisis. It was produced by King Jammy, then Prince Jammy, and the big hit of the album was I Love King Celacy. But it was not until the Showcase album was released in 1980 with a new lineup of Michael Rose, Ducky Simpson, Puma Jones, Sly Dunbar, and Robbie Shakespeare that Black Uhuru reached their creative peak. Throughout the first half of the 1980s, Black Uhuru continued their success with albums on Island Records Sensamilla, Red, Chill Out, and Anthem, along with compilations, dub albums, and live albums. They became the best-known reggae act since Bob Marley and won the first reggae Grammy for Anthem in 1984. Just like Ducky Simpson and Don Carlos, Michael Rose has continuing his legacy of powerful, message-filled music with the release of his latest album, I Give You Love, on Friday, September 15, 2023. Ducky Simpson once said he doesn't trust anybody. And it's easy to understand why he feels that way, having been ripped off and double-crossed by as many people as he has during his career, he must have really trusted Andrew B. who have been with him and the band longer than anyone. Surprisingly, only two albums, Unification and Dynasty, were released before Bees went back to pursue his solo career in 2003. In 2008, Simpson took on lead vocal duties, and in 2012, the group recorded a new album, As the World Turns, with guest appearances from Adesia Pilatos and Harabe De Palo, although this was still unreleased a year later due to the master files getting corrupted. In 2011, the group now featuring Derek Ducky Simpson, Andrew Bees, and K-Star, toured the U.S. for the first time since 2002. In 2014, Jojo Mack joined the group and left in 2016 to continue her solo career. 
The band re-recorded all but one track of As the World Turns, which was eventually released in September 2018. In 2012, Black Uhuru was honored with the Lifetime Achievement Award in music by the city of Las Vegas and was handed the key to the city. Alongside that award, August 31st was of officially named Black Uhuru Day in Las Vegas. Black Uhuru undertook a U.S. tour in 2016 with Andrew Bees on lead vocals and Elsa Green on backing vocals. Thanks for watching and do remember to subscribe, give it a like and post a positive comment in the comment section below and I'll see you again very soon for another video. Many thanks for watching Reggae Just Extra with Ras Dennis.